Hello and welcome to Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. In a letter today I'm flying back to Perth uh, with Qantas Link in a Fokker 100 which is a novelty because I've never been in one before. I've also never flown out of Kalgoorlie so what a day. Let's go and check in and uh, we'll see how it goes. I make videos about planes and sometimes swallowing flies in front of those planes. If you're into trip reports on board aircraft throughout the world and tours through interesting aircraft in museums then check out my channel for more videos. Also don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell. And here we are entering the check-in and bag drop area for both Qantas and Virgin Australia who fly a range of A320s, Fokker 100s and 737s between Kalgoorlie and Perth. In fact there's a lot of daily flights between the two cities which I suspect is because of the high number of FIFO workers. After dropping off my bag I was off through security and then into the departure gate. I was surprised to see this but there's actually a Qantas lounge which you can gain access through via a pin code. Inside there's a private seating area and a small selection of food and drinks, although the booze is locked off until midday. A highlight for me was these great looking cups inspired by the Yam Dreaming Indigenous Art livery on one of the 787 Dreamliners. But then I discovered the outside area which I think is for smoking although it gave me a great view of the airport apron. Now here's the same aircraft type, a Fokker 100 flown by Virgin Australia. While these aircraft have lost favour in Europe as they're ageing, several Aussie airlines love them. I'll tell you a bit more about Fokker. As well as having an awkward name for the English speaking world, they have an incredibly rich history reaching back to World War I. The Red Baron flew in a Fokker as did Charles Kingford Smith when he crossed the Pacific Ocean in the Southern Cross. Even the Dutch King flew one as a KLM first officer for 21 years and it was all kept secret until someone recognises his voice from an announcement. And they also assembled F-16 fighter jets under license from General Dynamic. And this little Fokker is our aircraft. Registration Victor Hotel November Hotel Juliet. This aircraft was assembled in 1993 and then operated for a number of airlines before coming to Australia in 2013. And back to some history. In the post-war period, Fokker built the successful turboprop F-27 Friendship and the jet-powered 28 Fellowship, and by the 1980s it was time to replace them. They started upgrading both, creating the turboprop F-50 and then the jet F-100, but as always happens in aviation, the programs were way more expensive than anticipated. The F-100 was launched in 1986 and was initially quite successful so they committed to the shorter F-70 which I flew last year and I'll link to that vlog in the video description below. They were bailed out by the Dutch government in the late 80s and the F-70 was launched in 1993 although by that time the financial problems were well established and there were also more competitors. In 1996 the relationship with parent company Daimler-Benz fell through as they decided to concentrate on making cars and Fokker went bankrupt after building only 283 F100s. Our flight was called and I took off to the departure gate. I'll explain some of the interesting design features on board but from the outside it's interesting as you'll note that the engines are right at the back and up higher. This has a number of advantages with one being that because they don't need to lug the engines underneath the wings, the whole plane can be lowered to the ground which helps with boarding and loading especially at regional smaller airports. It also lifts the engines up away from flying rocks and debris and it frees the wing up from extra turbulence from the big bulky metal things dropping below it. Here we are on board and you'll notice the seats are in a 2-3 layout which is great if you're travelling as a couple or like the window seat but don't enjoy climbing over too many people. Above you there's the individual overhead air vents and in front is a large tray table. There's quite a lot of leg room and then outside it there's a great view of the wings and engines. Unfortunately there's no in-flight entertainment screen or power plugs. The door was closed and the two engines started up and then we took off to the runway. 
I'll stop talking and let you enjoy the spool up. Now that we're in the air, let's get back to the aircraft design. Now these two large canoes store the flap mechanism, which you'll see extend to the maximum 42 degrees when we come into land. And yes, that's what the numbers are there for, in case the passengers were wondering the flap position. They're painted red to help the ground crew avoid whacking the heads on them as well. Now further out, you can see this black line, which is for identifying ice. The F-100's wing was very sensitive to ice accumulation, even up to 14 degrees Celsius. So by painting this part black, it makes it easier to spot any ice that was formed. And these four little things are static wicks. As the plane flies through the air, it hits many little particles, and that creates an electric charge, which is then spread out and released by these. And this thing is called a stall fence. When wings changed from being straight to swept back, they found that the air could sometimes move across sideways, causing the wing to lose lift and stall. Here's the fences on a Sabre fighter jet, which makes it easy to explain as they're pretty obvious. These keep the air in a straight line, moving up and over the wing. As it was just a 50 minute flight, there was just a snack and a bottle of water. The lemon slice in particular tasted great. We only briefly reached our cruising altitude of 30,000 feet before starting our descent down into a cloudy Perth. So, how was the flight and my first time on a Fokker 100? Look, overall it was fine. It's a perfectly sturdy and comfortable aircraft and certainly a lot smoother and faster than the turboprops that serve many regional routes. But if you are sensitive to noise, sit as far forward and away from the engines as possible, which is sort of common sense. And if you do like the view, don't sit in the last row as your view is mostly obscured by the engines. Otherwise, there's plenty of leg room when compared to other domestic aircraft, although there's no in-flight entertainment uh, with no screens, as you could see, and also no streaming or access to internet via Wi-Fi. The crews were friendly, as I've always found with Qantas Link. And by the way, check out the flaps, which you'll see have extended to the full 42 degrees. And here we are at Perth Airport. Now I was on board that very same Qantas Link Airbus A320 just in front of you now, um, but was flying in the opposite direction to today's flight, so make sure you check out my channel for that video. And finally, here we are pulling into the gate. The Fokker 100 next to us has been painted in the new silver roux livery, which I think looks great, and I figure that our aircraft would eventually be repainted as well. I prefer the new livery, although I know that some are unhappy that the kangaroo has lost its paws, but it's a debate, so feel free to comment below. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. Thumbs up, etc, etc. See you another time.